Welcome to part number 42 of Gran Turismo 5 B-Spec. This is the movie Chicane, and today we're doing the Schwarzwald League B. I bought this rough RGT in the used car dealership, and we're going to use this beast for that championship. You might notice some new cars in, inside my inventory. Well, those are cars that we'll be using for the rest of the events. I'll go ahead and show them all off later when those proper times of the LP do come in. The rims are cool. Oh, thank you. I bought some NK rims for the car itself. Make it look nice and clean. Anyway, Schwarzwald League B. Two races, one at Capering and one at the Nordschleife. Let's take a quick look at the typical opponent list. Oh. Okay, here's the thing. If we run into an SLS AMG and an Audi R8, we'll do some tuning. If not, we'll leave the car stock. But what we're going to do for sure is buy ourselves some stock tires. What's up, UFC? Better than the original? Yeah. I mean, the original, the only reason why I changed them because they were standard. And the Rough RGT is one of the better looking standard cars in GT5, so I figured, eh, might as well get some nice rooms with it. So for this event, we're going to have our new driver, Mark Weber, drive here. So yeah, that's the official last change in terms of my team. There's an Audi R8. Okay, we're going to have to buy something. Oh, there's an SLS as well. Okay. We are for sure going to have to buy some new parts for the car. Oh, that's right. This thing's a freaking normally aspirated car. Yeah, I got Weber. <laughs> yeah. That's the official last uh, driver change I'm doing. That's really everything we can do, at least in this menu. Oh yes, I told Cat Cool to find one, and he was like, "Are you crazy?" He's like, "Yeah, do I want to oversteer the entire time?" No, thank you. <laughs> well, I just told him like, "Hey, might as well make it fun, right?" Because he was telling me like, "I don't want to use the car that's really boring." And just make the stream boring, and I told him, well, might as well use a rough. But he was like, that's a little bit too overkill. But yeah. Yeah, Kaku's almost done with the game. Isn't he doing the Le Mans 24 right now? I know he's like, at least, at least at the minimum, like seven hours in. I kind of stopped watching the Le Mans stream for a bit. Because right now, we're going to be watching some capering racing with the rough RGT. Here we go. Ooh, the SLS. Four wide heading down to turn one. Holy crap. Yeah. Weber's going to have a real challenge here. And this kind of makes sense because Weber's driving a rough, which is essentially a Porsche. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. We're not going to completely quit the race and say oh, it's impossible yet. Mazda 787B. I, I remember watching just a little bit of his uh, live stream. The thing is, is that he streams while I'm in school. So I try to catch his stream when I'm like eating lunch or, you know, I mean, there's no lunch. I'm in freaking college. But, you know, if, if I, on my breaks, usually, you're, you're almost rich. 89 cents earned from YouTube ads. Bro, ballin'. Play that Jim Jones song, you know, we, we fly, huh? No lie. Freaking Chad Warden song. <laughs> God damn it. Am I like the only person who remembers Chad Warden? Anyways. Break out the red panties. <laughs> Baby, we did it. <laughs> yeah, then it's Nerver 24 and B Spec. Yep. Cat Cool is like. Cat Cool's saying that he's not looking forward to B Spec, but I'm, I'm really trying to convince him that this is fun. Like, he thinks it's going to be boring, but it's like, no, dude. Like, if, if you just get, you know, if, if you train your drivers right and you use e relatively equal or slightly better machinery, dude, B-Spec is a lot of fun. I mean, look at the Indianapolis 500. That race was a blast, and I used a Toyota 7. I'm too cheery. <laughs> well, 
Oh, what's up, GTSV? I mean, hey. I, I got a lot of energy today. Well, Weber's up to third. Greatest of all time. Oh, hell yeah, it was, dude. Dude, that was a, an amazing race. And then once I actually got the transmission slightly tuned up, like, I, I made a slight adjustment to the transmission. I literally lowered the speed down to 220 because that's when Alonzo was slamming on the brakes. And then they were going about 205 miles an hour into the corner. I was like, yeah, six lap lead. Ended up winning the race flawlessly. See, this is why I didn't give up because look at Weber going on the outside. Not bad for a number two driver, Mark. Oh, it's 11 p.m. over there. Ah, got it, got it. Celica told Cat Cool to use a Red Bull. No. Gotta make it fun, dude. Wait, by the way, did Cat Cool ever get the golds on the Red Bull challenges? Speaking about the Red Bull? Because I remember he actually was doing the Red Bull challenges and he was watching some of Rhino GT4 videos. Rhino GT, yeah, Rhino GT4's videos on the Red Bull Sebastian Vettel challenge. Weber has enough of these German bastards. Pain set back via proxy punting the SLS. <laughs> oh boy, dude, look at Mark. Look at Mark, dude, freaking going and beating a car that has at least thirty more performance points than his. Oh, he only got gold on one. Yikes. Well, I didn't quite expect the rough RGT to be this good. Actually, I did, because this car is really badass. <laughs> Imagine 20 F F1 2018 B-Spec with Co-Masters AI. Oh god, dude, that would be bonkers. I love the SLS and GT5 used it for a lot of races. Yeah, me too. I remember winning the SLS from one of the... Mercedes AMG Driving Academy races. I can't remember which one, but the A spec cars I'm pretty familiar with were which ones you win for the most part. You can't do the Red Bull Challenge? Well, I need to get my wheel fixed because my G27's motor is dying. So I need to pretty much get an upgrade. Either get like a G29 or just get another G27 or a Driving Force GT for like the PS3 slash PS2 stuff. But, yeah, I want to get a wheel for sure before I do the Red Bull stuff. You know, the rain still holds up pretty well today. Except for the standard cars, this game is pretty much... A well, it's, it's aged relatively well. I mean, some of the tracks... I, I think the detail on some of the tracks are a little bit off. Like, capering, for example. Like, the grass just kind of looks fake, but... Apart from that, I mean, there's some some tracks that still look pretty good compared to today. The Monza challenge is insanely difficult. I thought Monza was the easiest one, and I thought Suzuka was the hardest. And then again, it's been, I don't know, um, since like 2013. It's been like since 2013 when I last tried the Red Bull challenge at all. I know, they fell short with 231. Isn't there tire wear at A-Spec 2? But because there's less laps, it, um, it doesn't show as much. Oh, I know, like, my biggest problem with GT5 and 6, really, is the events themselves and, like, the length of the games. It's just, like, manufacturer, you know, I, I don't think it's a good idea to include manufacturer events in, like, the in the regular go race. Manufacturer events kind of have to be their own separate thing. 
and a lot of manufacturer events were in this game and just with one single event which counted as part of the regular like professional series or extreme series or whatever that was my main problem with GT5 and 6 really really it just wanted more events but I wish the B spec I, I wish there were just so many more events for both A spec and B spec cause dude I'm kind of sad that we're coming to an end soon with the B-Spec mode, because, dude, this is so much fun. Exactly. GT4 B-Spec? You know, that's something I actually considered before. I've actually considered doing a, a B-Spec playthrough of the game. The OG B-Spec Bob. I know, dude. Holy crap. Look at the amount of air that Weber got. Holy crap. What's up, Rishi? Compared to these guys, let's see what they get. Decent amount of air. <laughs> C spec. <laughs> that would be pretty funny, dude. Imagine. Hit cruise simulator. No, no, no. How about we get D spec where you're playing the PR manager so you have to literally make all the deals and stuff. No, not really, because the, the thing with B-Spec is that in GT6, it's not mandatory. Whereas here, it's mandatory. I mean, I could do a separate playthrough of GT6 with... You know what? <laughs> F-Spec, we don't turn up to the paddock. Cheer whenever your guy makes a pass. Yeah, but uh, you know what? Gran Turismo 4 might not be a B-Spec game. Here's why. Here's what I'm thinking. Barney actually just gave me a good idea. He said, you're not going to do any B-Spec when you do GT6. But you can do B-Spec. Like I said, it's not mandatory. The thing is, is that Gran Turismo 4 is way too long to make it into a separate B-Spec series. And on top of that, a lot of the a lot of the events you can't even do B-Spec for. Like the mission challenges, you can't do... Um, what's another one? Um, you can't do... Uh, the rally events, obviously licenses you can't do. I had D-Spec where you can be in the live commentary. E-Spec, you're the fans. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'm, I'll consider doing a GT6 B-Spec playthrough. Licenses, yes, that too. So, yeah, it, it, felt, it felt empty because you didn't have the ability to develop your drivers. But yeah, um, if I do GT6 as a B-Spec separate playthrough, what I would do is this. Since GT6 doesn't have that many cars, I would probably have, um, I would probably do only, uh, premium only for G for my A-Spec playthrough and then standard only for my B-Spec to kind of mix up the, the field a bit, you know? Because there's so many new cars in GT6 that I, I feel like doing it premium only would be pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Through an update. <laughs> you never noticed it until the day the servers died. I remember when it came out, and I was just like, oh, damn. It's only... No GTR LM for B-Spec? No, for A-Spec, bro. A that, that's an A-Spec thing. Because I remember doing the GT Academy thing. Yeah, that's why. I mean, they, they fell short. Like you said, they, you said if they had 500, I said 440 something is what they had, which is plenty. Whereas GT5, I mean, I'm just gonna use all the prize cards that I get here, you know, and maybe a couple of surprises. You'll have to see. 
Like, I can tell you for sure. Like, I can tell you right now. Um, I do plan on using the Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR race car for the Nurburg 24 in A-Spec. For the Indianapolis 500, I plan on using the Chaparral 2J if I can get my hands on one. Uh, what else? What else? That's all I can think of for now. Now, the car for the Nurburg 24 in B-Spec, that's going to be a surprise. All I'm going to say is it's going to it's gonna be a legendary car, and I'm going to be stupid enough to try it. That's the only hint I'm giving. But, of course, i got to find it in the dealership first, because it's a standard car. Oh, yeah, the driving was good. Dude, Gran Turismo games, like, that's what I like about them, just the fact that... They're made... Yes! Ding, 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 ding. You got it right. You got it right, Rishi. Suzuki Escudo. That's what I'm going to use for the Nürburgring 24 in B-Spec. Anyways, um... Yeah, um... GT... You know, Gran Turismo games were just made well in general in terms of controls because they feel awesome with a wheel and they feel fine with a controller. Because accessibility is the name, that's why. It's got to be for everybody. And holy crap. Gonzalez. He's way far behind. These guys pretty much gave up the fight for the lead. Dude, what is up with that M5? Good lord. That fart can exhaust. Yeah, I agree with you, Barney. The GT6 events for endurances are pretty dumb. <laughs> that M5 looks impaled in front. Every car in GT4 understeers. Boy, have you used the freaking um, option Stream Z? That thing is just an oversteer monster. Yeah, that's why I'm, that's why I want to use a wheel for I want to use a wheel for GT4 cuz it feels really good on a wheel. And if I can't get a like if I can't get my G27 working fine and if I can't get a good G27 for a cheap price or whatever, then I'm just going to use an emulator and use my TGT for GT4. Anything with arrows just god awful. Yes, I can. Uh, there's a plug-in that emulates any wheel that you want as a Driving Force Pro. The one thing I have to figure out, though, is the optimal settings for... Thanks, UFC. Appreciate it, dude. Really appreciate that, man. Yeah, dude, we're, we're coming along. We're getting there, dude. Because I was telling Jimmer, like, you know, I know with hard work and just, you know, dedication and just enjoying myself on YouTube, I know we're going to get there eventually. But anyways, um, yeah, there, there's a, like I said, there's a plugin that you can use any wheel. Oh, yeah, I already said that. The thing I want to say is I need to figure out the settings graphically for PCSX2 because sometimes the game just runs, like, with a lot of lag for some reason on my computer. And my computer is really good. Not really good, but, you know, good enough to run like a Seto and other games like that. And the thing about PTSX2 as well is that it's really dumb. Like, like, it's not very user-friendly in my opinion because the thing is... Oh, thank you, UFC. Appreciate it. Um, the thing about PCSX2 is that you have to constantly change the settings every single time for every game. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. And I really don't want to use PCSX2 for GT4. So 
What's up, Fernando? You can stay. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to avoid PCS62 as much as possible. Night tracks are the worst in PCSX2. Ugh. Even something as mundane as, like, looking back will just crash the entire game on a console. Oh, are you talking about Timeless Gaming? I know he runs his shit really fast. And there we go. That's race number one of two, one. Mark Weber, winner. Winner, uh, I don't know, chicken dinner, I guess. I'm bad. Anyways. EPSCC kind of sucks, though. Like, the thing, the thing about EPSXE is that it's really shit when you try to run the emulator itself on newer PCs. Like... I don't know, man. Like, I I feel like there's other emulators like Midnafin, which are a little bit better. But the thing with Midnafin too is that you don't get the freedom to use different plugins to make the graphics look better. Retro Arc, yeah. I mean, I can't. I don't really like Retro Arc. I don't know. I just kind of gave up. I just kind of gave up on PS uh, PS One emulation because oh yeah, Weber. I kind of gave up on PS One emulation because I have a modded PS Three where I could just play my backups on. You know, I don't need to have a legitimate disc anymore. So, that's it, you know? See, like, the thing I don't get is, like, yeah, it was underpowered compared to the GameCube, but has some fantastic optimization. Yeah, like, exactly, UFC. So, it's kind of pointless to try to find a PS1 emulator when I have a modded PS3 to put all of my ISOs on. No emulation needed. But, um,. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't understand how the GameCube is, like, graphically superior, I guess. But Dolphin runs perfectly without really any adjustments. And then PCSX2 is a nightmare to work with sometimes. Oh, yeah, I saw that Timeless improved the graphics, and you're like, how can you improve the graphics like that? Okay, this start's going to be tricky for Mark. Let's see what he does. Me too, Fernando. Me too. All right, up to third. So two BMWs in the lead. That's true, UFC. That is very true. Hell, like, even last generation consoles are not the easiest to emulate. The only exception is the Wii, because all the Wii was just the same shit as the GameCube. Honestly. Hell yeah, dude. Somebody has to get freaking Gran Turismo 4's uh, online test version running up. Uh, you can, Gus, but through PS Now. That's about it. You can only stream the games. Come on, Mark. Get out of that BMW sandwich, please. Late break? Can you get the GTR? No? Yikes. Yeah. What GTSV and UFC said. But the only way you can really play PS3 games is, like I said, PS Now. And that's when you actually stream the games, but not through physical disc. You obviously stream them online onto your console, which I don't like that idea because it's like... You're not downloading the game itself, you're streaming it. So I can't imagine it being that fast in terms of loading and stuff. Unlike, let's say, Xbox with their um, Game Pass, where you download the games onto the console, 
until you lose your subscription. I like that idea. True. The cell processor? Oh, yeah. Xbox backwards compatibility is fucking awesome. Hell yeah, dude. Dude, do you know how many hours I put in, like, on the days that I can't stream because of family and stuff? Do you know how many hours I put into Mercenaries Playground of uh, Destruction? So many hours to that. What was that, Barney? You, um, retracted your message. You need to get yourself a 360? I still have my 360. Just really haven't played it much, because I don't have a controller for it. And then the Xbox One, I got it for free, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, production cost most likely, Gus. Like, for PS2 and PS3, it's like, production cost, they probably don't want to put the extra amount of money. I know, but I'm just saying, like, they probably don't want to put the extra amount of cash into production cost for literally... You know, for literally no profit. But, but PS1... The thing is, is that, like, I don't think the PS1 could take that much resources. I mean, dude, it's a console from the 90s. Do they really... Is there an extra chip they really need or something for the PS1? I don't think so. Yes, Barney, I know Hammer Studio is gaming, but unfortunately, I don't really like to talk too much about them because I'm part of Marvin the Gamer 27's Discord. And uh, the thing with Hammer Studios Gaming is that he, he did go and attack a lot of Marvin's members of his community, like a couple of members in his community, so I really don't want to associate myself with Hammer Studios, unfortunately. Since Marvin and I are, are friends in real life, so yeah, I, I, I try to avoid that kind of discussion. Hey, Deep War, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Well, Weber's lead out of the carousel, extending Fiketti, or however you pronounce that name. Oh, yes, PS Classic is coming out. Yep. I mean, here's the thing about the PS1 Classic. Because a lot of the games, you know, like, because there's so many, so many of the classics are third-party titles, like Gran Turismo, uh, Metal Gear Solid, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Oh, wait, is, it, is Symphony of the Night going to be on? No, 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 wait, 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 wait. What's? Yeah, dude, me see, Metal Gear Solid is not going to be on. What's been announced? For oh, no, Final Fantasy VII. See, like, games like Castlevania, Metal Gear, I don't think they're going to be on PS Classic. You know? A lot of the classics are third-party games, in my opinion. So it's like, how many first-party titles can you get, you know, like, on the PS Classic? Not that many. And once again, you know, I would consider getting one, but the problem is... I have a modded PS3 that I can just put ISOs on. Therefore, the PS... No, I don't think so, Gus, because the problem with uh, Gran Turismo is that they would have to relicense all the cars. And, you know, even if they had the licenses currently to, like, Toyota, Mazda, Nissan... Ford, they would have to get the licenses from companies that don't exist anymore, like Vector, Venturi, um, what, what other uh, company is not currently in GT Sport? Vector, Venturi, Tommy Kyra, uh, like a lot of those kind of companies, the more obscure ones, they would have to relicense it. Well, Venturi actually does exist still. My apologies, I just remembered because of Venturi Formula E. But, the point still stands, you would have to spend a lot of money into getting the um, licensing renewed and the songs as well it's like what what do you do do you put the songs from Japan which is all Masahiro Ando songs or do you go and get the US songs for cheaper or do you get the Europe songs for cheaper you know like it, it's too much it, it's way too complicated to actually go and 
and, and get a PS Classic version out when you have all of these obstacles to go over. And I don't think Sony nor Polyphony want to do any of that. <laughs> yeah, UFC, that that would be pretty funny. Hell yeah, he was, dude. Hell yeah, he was, GTSB. Well, one more lap to go. One more long lap around the North Schleife, but I'm not complaining because I love this track. The sights of the Nürburgring never cease to put a smile on my face. We're just taking a look at the other German cars here. Wh who's in last? Whoops. There we go. Ah, uh, the poor fart can Audi RS6. Your dad's sedan right here. Nah, I'm kidding. These cars are cool. But Jesus, it sounds terrible with the racing exhaust. Yeah, dude, T-Score is awesome. Like, I don't really know much about Jazz Fusion, but I like T-Score, I like Cassiopeia. Like, those are the only two, two uh, bands that I know from the Jazz Fusion genre, and dude, they're really good. It's not? What is it? I highly doubt that's stock, because I don't think those cars would sound like farts, dude. I'm pretty sure those are like semi-racing or sports or something. Those are definitely not stock. Samurai racing, there you go. There's it's still rice. That's still rice, Gus. <laughs> still riced out. Well, what is the gap right now? Sounds like farts. It does, dude. 12 second lead. Cool. We got a little good battle here for a second between Fiketti and Me Dome. Right, seven, seven and a half thousand credits. The racing ones are ten thousand. I know. By the way, for those who are my Discord channel, have you guys seen the Rice sub channel inside there? We've been posting a lot of rice lately. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Pepsi hands down, my friend. I don't know, man. Coke burns my stomach. Like, I, I don't like the taste. And I just don't like the feeling afterwards, dude. I, I, I don't know. It's something about Coke that I just don't like. The only thing I like Coke for is, like, slushies. Ooh, dude, I'm not streaming for that long tonight. I'm only streaming for about maybe two hours. And, uh, for like another hour and a half at least. And, dude, I'm down to go watch some Black Ops 4. Yeah, at least the BMWs do sound different. One more for the Pepsi's gang. Beppies gang. <laughs> Beppies. Candy? That too. Like, co like the little drums or whatever, like the little Coke, Coca-Cola flavored candies are good. I mean, I drink so soda with sugar, but... Cool, 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 UFC. Um, anyways, um, I mean, I do drink sh soda with sugar, but soda is not really something I drink all the time. Like, I know soda is really bad for you, so you can't be drinking that shit all the time. Same way you can't drink beer every single day. But I love beer. <laughs> but, you know. It's all about moderation.
Well, the battle for second is starting to die out, but the battle for third is intensifying. The GTR is starting to fall just a little bit behind the M5. Sandwiched in between the two executive M5s. Two big boys. Oh, the GTR going off. That's going to allow the M5 to get by, isn't it? Nope. Not close enough. Oh, really? While he's here... Okay. Actually, actually, sorry, Barney. I got to I gotta re-answer your question. Okay. <laughs> the initial taste of being ruined it was the alcohol. <laughs> well, here's the thing. If you're talking about sodas in the United States, like the United States variants, Pepsi is better than Coke. But if you're talking about from Mexico, Coke is better than Pepsi. If you guys have never import, if you guys have never had any of the Coca Colas imported from Mexico, try them. They are the best, especially with seafood, man. Let's check, check on Weber. Yeah, Weber's pretty much cruising. These guys, on the other hand, nope. The gloves are off. The battle for seconds re-intensified. In Scotland, Iron Brew dominates Coke. I'm not sure what that is. Well, because it, it is... It, it's a rough. See, the thing is, is that... Ruff has modified the Porsche so much that it's considered its own manufacturer, Barney. So therefore, at, the, at this time, yeah, Ruff is an actual company. So at this time, when the Porsche license was still exclusive to those greedy bastards at EA, Polyphony and some other gaming companies went over to Ruff as a alternative alternative choice. Well, yes, they had Porsches in other games too, especially Forza. But look at some games like Forza Motorsport 4 didn't get Porsche until they had a DLC, Iron Brew. Oh. Well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Please excuse my ignorance, my good friend. Anyways, um, yeah, like Forza Motorsport 4 didn't get Porsche until like a, a expansion pack came out. Project Gotham Racing 4 just didn't have Porsches, period. They had roughs mainly because of that EA deal. Correct, Lucino. That's exactly what Ruff is. It's, it's basically an aftermarket brand for Porsche. Same way Apt is an aftermarket brand for Audi. Same way Nismo is an aftermarket brand for Nissan. Or Nissan. Whatever regional dialect you guys want to say. Whatever. Um, Because you're edgy. <laughs> Damn Scottish people. Damn edgelords. I'm kidding. <laughs> Well, Weber's only a few corners away from winning. Damn, the standard MF, MF, M5 just muscles his way through the premium one. <laughs> Freaking UFC. <laughs> You're dumb. <laughs> I made a Joy Diaz marathon, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I was I had a feeling you were like trying to emulate. Oh hell yeah, dude. I love Joy Diaz. Okay. The question is, what German car do we win? I feel like the colors are a little bit washed out. Hang on a second. This damn capture card. Yeah, I don't think you guys noticed, but the, the, the colors were a little bit off because my capture card is actually broken from the AV input side. But anyways, Nuvolari Quattro. I think that's an Audi concept. No, Joey Diaz is... Well, he might be, but there's another Joey Diaz that we're referring to. He's a comedian. A really funny one, too. He has a podcast. Wait, does he have a podcast? Uh, maybe. Uh, 
I don't know. I, I just really like... I just really like Joey Diaz when he's on the Joe Rogan experience. Oh, really? Oh, he has his own stuff? Oh, shit. Hell yeah, he does, dude. His stories are great. But you know what's also great? This prize car. Not bad. Nice little concept. <laughs> Sounds like a Mexican drug, Lord Enforcer. Well, next time on GT5 Beast Spec, we're going to be doing some more German racing, particularly the DTM Championship. And we'll see who races for that title. We'll see.